You are welcome to the second session of Advanced Qualitative Research Methods for PhD students. Today, my objective is to try to help you choose an area of research for your PhD. And I tell you the easiest way to be able to do so, so that you can have your PhD in focus. So if you don't have an area of research for your PhD, this is a good lecture for you. If you have one, but you are not very sure whether it does what you end up doing, this is a, a good session for you. If you are thinking about three of them and you're asking yourself which of them should you do, this is a good session for you. If you are somebody who doesn't even know where to start from, this is a good session for you. If you are somebody who has finished the, all the, the PhD already and you are just coming to sit in the class, this is a good session for you. Maybe to let you <laughs> help you think about what you used to do. <laughs> anyway, so I'll just take you through what we'll be doing today. I don't know whether we can finish but we have some parts that have repeated because of what we'll be doing today factors which influence the topic selection research gaps and topic selection redefine the literature review identify locating literature then we'll come back to research gaps and topic selection hopefully next week again if we don't do it this time the objective is to see what you have le learned from what i've told you in one to four so that's why you have the repeat there so we are using chapter two and three and a little bit of chapter eight chapter two, three, a little bit of eight. I'll show you where we are using eight so that you can keep um, that in mind. So I just, I want to just go straight to the, uh, you are not master students, I want to just go straight to the point, what is important. So factors which influence the choice of a top research topic. The first one has to do with you, the student who is going to do the long essay. The second one is the supervisor. The third one is the data source, the sponsor, the society and trends that you come up with. And the last one is the research problem. Now, all the, first, this is this one, listen carefully. All the first five are list, has to deal with the background. It is only the final one that deals with the research problem. All the first five deal with the background to the research. Why you got into this, what influenced you, how you choose your ideas. The last one is what actually does the PhD. The first five, gives you an interest area, gives you a phenomenon to think about. The last one gives you the problem about the phenomenon. The first five gives you an idea, a concept in industry that you think that has to be researched on. The last one being the gaps in research tells you which aspect of the concept you should research on. So get the differences. You are PhD students, so you see that I'm teaching differently from the way I teach the master students. So the first five, are what has been telling you have been walking around like francis met me last year i want to do phd that was the first five the things i want to do phd maybe he looked at where he's working now he talked about who is sponsoring him we have got some money now he thinks that uh, it's look it look good to have dr by my name so his own personal aspirations some of you are mps it is oh let me get this so that when i go to parliament i'll look good that is you that idea some of you are thinking about a career in future um, you think that it's in between time now, you, let me get this one and add to my career. Because if I go to the to the job world right now in academia, you need to have a PhD before you can get a job, you. So you are the one who is going to start it. But the most important one after you is your research interest and the interest of your supervisors. You are supposed to have discussions with them and know what you want, you want them to do. Yesterday, you heard about the fact that some rankings have come. So some of you are not thinking about who should now supervise you. Somebody you chose is not in the ranking, so you are thinking twice, but don't look at that. What's important is that the person who is going to supervise you has an interest in what you want to do. So how do you get to know that? How do you get to know that? So quickly, I'll stop right now and then go to and quickly go to uh, um, online the online platform. Let me just share my whole my whole desktop because we'll be doing up and down a lot today. So we let's go straight to um, there's a platform called Google Scholar. So it's called Scholar. I, I, let me zoom in a little bit so that those of you can see can see, see better. Now. Oh, that's taking me to okay, so that's the scholar.google.com. When you go to scholar.google.com, Francis is, for example, is in the finance department. He he knows there's a guy called Lord Mensa. So he can type Lord Mensa here and to bring him some of the things concerning Lord Mensa. So if there's a profile for Lord Mensa, you can just click on it and to show you all that Lord Mensa has been researching on. 
then you can click on by year and know the kind of things he has been doing so that you can know what whether you should approach him. This is very important because it is in, if you, the only issue is that you are PhD student. So you got in by being chosen by somebody already. So somehow you are being paired back to somebody, someone. But if you have been paired to Lord Mesa, you have been paired to um, Dateba, or you have been paired to, uh, uh, let's say, Professor Hinson or anybody in the business school, you need to know the person's work. Now that person is your lead supervisor. He's going to create a committee other people who will join the team. So anybody who joins the team, you need to know the person's work and know the style of writing of the person. Otherwise you have a design related gap. You'll be writing a particular way the person doesn't like, especially with your lead supervisor who you have to listen to most. Make sure that your lead supervisor, all the work she has done, even his PhD, you have read it. These things I'm telling you are very, very important. Don't just joke with it because at the end of the day, if you don't get to know the PhD, the supervisor intimately, know his strength, know what he has done in his PhD, you always be letting him work so much and you're not like, be happy with you. For example, I myself as a supervisor right now, I'm not happy with some of my students in my year one because at the end of the day, they don't know my work and every time I have to repeat it. I have to repeat it, read, go and read this. There are some works that I've given to them twice. They have not even told me that I've given to them twice. But what I've given to them twice, three times to read and they don't, they don't even remind me to tell prof, you gave it to us to read because I know they have not read it. So it is important that you get to know what your supervisor did. It's important that you know the research interest of the, them right now and the, where you are also going. Don't just be lost in what you want to do. Otherwise, you don't get a very good supervision. Know what they are also doing. What Know what the research grants they have, what they are thinking, thinking about doing. You came into the program with a mind like you want to do something or let's say um, transformational leadership. Currently, the potential person who supervises you is maybe, let's say, the uh, 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 Professor Danofori, who is the provost. And he's now thinking about leadership in public sector. Instead of you taking transformational leadership and adding it to the public sector, you are still doing transformational leadership in construction industry. You are, you are lost. Because he's not his interest area. He may not tell you, but at the end of the day, when you are, he's working with you, you just be watching you. You just be watching you, you just be watching you, thinking that something will break your mind to let you know that come closer. If only he tells you that focus on that area, then focus on that area. So it's important that you know who your supervisor, your lead supervisor is, because everybody should have a lead supervisor by now. That's how you got into the program. But then most importantly, know what the person is into now, not yesterday, not two years ago. Now, what is the person into now? So that your work is current. The work, you see, if you come to me, currently I'm looking at internet gender, and then uh, digital platforms that you bring something which is remotely very far away from me. I'll just be watching you. I will find somebody who to join my team who can supervise you. I'm not saying what you are doing is wrong, but what I'm just trying to say is that the way I am going, I am currently looking to. That is what I'm getting research grants on. So if I get a research grant, you are already your name is inside. You are getting money to do your project. If I get a team, you are going to write paper books on things. You are getting your PhD being done. It's easy for me to read your PhD. But if you go and take something like um, remotely, with financial literacy and in, 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 in developing country, which is too, I used to do that one when, when about four years ago, five years ago, when I supervised some students, I don't do that now. And that may not be my interest area. So know your supervisor's interest area, very, very, very important. And your supervisor, if he's a good supervisor, will tell you what is new, even if it's not it's an interest area, he can see in the future, for example, Four years, uh, two, uh, yes, I should say four years. Four years ago, somebody approached me called Kingsley and told me that he wants to do a PhD. I told him that, what do you want to do? He said, I'm talking plenty. And he was an MBA student. I told him, look, the new area that's coming up in the next four years is, called, uh, is, is gaming. Go and do something on gaming. Go and read about it and come and tell me what you like to do in gaming. Because I've done some little work in gaming in, in, in Rwanda and, and, and Uganda. But go and do something and come back and come and tell me what you do. So he came back and told us there's a new area called, there's an upcoming area called gamification. Using gaming to be able to, gamif, um, gamifying um, things like how you use game, gaming technology or gaming and principles to be able to ap uh, apply it in that uh, education or finance. And I told him that actually, I, that's what I did in, did in, did in um, uh, Uganda. We're using gamification in, in AIDS, AIDS. We're trying to teach people how to um, know more about AIDS and then the conditions about AIDS and we're using games to do that. So he wanted to do that with education. I told that that's a, it's a good thing. The guy started it. We started working on it. We became the lead people who are working on it in, um, in that area in Africa. By the time we realized the whole information system and field of study, 
they wanted to create um, a gamification um, um, a consortium. So you have got research groups, interest groups. Now they called him to become the vice president of the maiden group. And he went to become the vice president we, uh, of the maiden group. Then we published other things there. After he became a vice president, because of that same kind of thing we did, I was then also nominated to become a vice president or something else. So I'm just telling you that if you talk to your supervisor intimately, you can know the future. Don't just be walking around thinking that what you have is a good thing. Some of you have got something which is good, but it is not ready. It is not ready for the market, meaning that it has not gained much maturity. So please look at what your supervisor is doing now and what you're doing in the future, where his grants are going to. Don't be lost in your own world about what you are thinking is important. Think about your supervisor. He's a person who's going to spend countless midnights to help you read your work. If you come to him and you, you are you, what you are doing is so diff much different, he has to now read and come come and get abreast with your area before he can even supervise you. So you make the work more difficult for you and him. Otherwise, too, you will have to find somebody to join the team. And because the person is not the lead, the challenge you also have is that sometimes the person may not be interested in driving the, 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 the journey, just like how he, your supervisor, if he had interest in you, will be driving the journey. So please know your supervisor, know what he's doing. I've shown you how to, the business school website has got their profiles there. That is an old profile. That's what I'm showing you that look at their, them in, for, in the, in, uh, on Google Scholar. The other way to get their details is also to look at Google directly and add Scholar. Cause sometimes the person may have it, but it's not very popular. So you may not find it in Google Scholar. So let's say, um, let's say, um, who again? I, I thought about that bar. So let me, that is a, um, the 50th, I think the, the 50th in the list that they brought yesterday, were a, a great scholar that I respect so much. So if you look at um, Dr. Dateba, I had a scholar, you see that has come straight. Professor Dateba has just come straight here. He is coming. And he is one of the HR people who is represented. So you want to work with him, we work with him. He and uh, Abosete are very good scholars. You want to talk to them. Now you look at even the reason, look at the evidence of the scholarship. One of his papers is 331 citations, 331 alone. These are the guy and the European business, uh, 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 general business management. Okay. So all I'm just want to try and point to you is that please note that the, 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 the key guys, look at what he's doing now. Does organizational politics affect leaders' ability to engage Ghanaian bankers? Okay. So you see some of the things he's doing. Now. There may be other things he's doing. He even has a 2020 paper that has, a four, has four citations. So you think about, look at what is happening here. Very, very interesting in, in his work. So uh, he does leadership, CSR, oil and gas. So if you are in this area, this is what will be of interest to you. So please, you can use Google or you can use Google. If you use Google, type the person's name as scholar. If you use Google Scholar, you type the person's name. The person is that much research on and he has a page, it will show up. So let's go back to our slides. Please, you can ask questions. You know, we are having a conversation, even though I'm a little bit very enthusiastic about the area because PhD students sometimes you walk around the first six months and you don't know what you are doing and I can tell you that some of you after that even though you have done the first six months you are still asking yourself what am I doing so I want that to, to stop I want that to stop I want you to move towards something um, better hey James James Abugire is your dad Professor Abugire or your brothers no no please bro you don't know each other Oh, we know ourselves, but we are not related. Okay. Hey, Kanyes, when they say they know themselves, then there's a lot inside. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so which department are you entering? Finance, please. Finance, okay. So you have avoided HR. Okay. <laughs> okay. So let's continue. Anyway, so um, going back to my slides, um, the supervisor matters. The next one is about your supervisor is your data source. Some students are more concerned with data source. So they want to do something on World Bank. They want to use published data by World Bank. So they choose the data first before they choose the organization. They choose the, the topic. It happens. It's not a wrong thing, but you have to be very careful that your data will fit the kind of things that your supervisor wants to research on. Some people choose the organization. I want to do something on the district assemblies in Ghana. I want to do something on um, COVID-19 and, and, and prevalence in, 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 in um, chip compounds that's what he wants to do but be careful that your supervisor is also wants to do that and maybe you are saying that because you have access to that place already but access does not mean that the place is mature for a PAD. 
that one I'll talk about those kind of things when you get into data collection. Some students have got wonderful areas they want to do their research in. They have chosen maybe Konongo. There's interesting project going there by government. They are doing something, some sea defense project. And you want to look at government uh, project management in government projects, something like that. And you have chosen that town because you want to be MP in that town in, in future. Nothing wrong about that. But make, make sure that the data you collect there can, can be good enough to answer the research questions. Otherwise, the, the research questions will be well done. The literature review will be well done. The framework will be well done. The variables will not apply to the town because the people don't have enough sophistication around the issue to be able to collect data on them. For example, somebody says that he's doing a study on entrepreneurship and he wants to try to understand which of them works well, whether family owned, um, family born entrepreneurs, and and then um, uh, um, entrepreneurs who, who develop on their own, not through any family inheritance. Which of them are more likely to succeed in rural communities in Ghana? Now he goes to a rural community and he thinks that he, chose, he chooses Bekwai. No, no, that Bekwai is a municipality that even has a DVLA or something like that on its own. But it, and because he wants to be MP in Bekwai, he chooses, he labels Bekwai as a rural environment, but it's not rural. How can it work? So you have to choose something else and you don't go and ruralize Bekwai, find some small ghetto in Bekwai and say that it's rural and use it for your study because you want to do something in that town. No, 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 no. Better go for a proper rural town or a rural community that has been labeled as a rural community by Ghana Statistical Service. Otherwise, your data itself will not fit the variables you are studying. So please be very careful about data source. The next one has to do with um, current trends. Quite a number of people like current trends to research on. Nothing wrong about that. They're in news is going on, things are happening in society. But my challenge with that is that sometimes there is not much maturity in terms of the knowledge of the respondents to be able to respond to you when you want to do a study on that. For example, all this fix my country or fix the country or I'll fix, fix your attitude discussions that is going on. If you want to do a, a thesis on it, I advise you that forget about it, fix my country. It is more about citizen engagement with government. Stand, stand at the citizen, citizen engagement with government. You find face my country, you find uh, Kumi Preku, you find so many different things to study. But if you just focus, focus on face my country, by the time, the way Ghana is, by the time you, you are in year one, by the time you start collecting data in year two, if your supervisor is good enough to help you do that, or what really happens, year three, now you first semester year three, you're actually collecting data. Now it is now fix my, uh, it will stop the fix my country. It will become like, let's, it, let's chop together. Maybe that's what they will say. So the whole thing would have changed and you, there's no fix my country anymore. What will you do? Don't build it around their strengths. Look at the issue that is being discussed and focus on the issue. The issue or the phenomenon you are seeing is about citizen engagement with government. So stay with citizen engagement with government. Any form of the citizen engagement that comes up, you can study it. But if you turn it to face my country, and then the face my country report tomorrow morning say they won't do it again, then the whole study falls apart. No, don't do, don't build your, don't build your study around one particular occurrence that you are not very sure that it, it will be there by the time you are doing your 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 your, 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 your work. Somebody then said a problem. Are you trying to say that I cannot study a, a, a one time issue that happen? <laughs> I'm not saying you can't study a one time issue that happen. For example. There was a time in Ghana that money was flown to Brazil for us to um, um, pay our, school, our footballers. If you want to study that phenomenon, the phenomenon has ended. There is a clear start point and a, an end point. You can look at it and collect data. And in a case study, you always want to know the boundary of the case study. So there was a big, there was, there was a World Cup. Is it World Cup? I've forgotten the year. Is it World Cup 2012 or is it World Cup 2016? Is it 2016 if I'm right? So World 2014. Cup 2014. World Cup 20. World Cup 2014. It's a specific event, the whole world. And if you Google World Cup 2014, all the stories will come up. So it is a, there's a boundary around it. The event has finished beginning and end. The people, some of them are alive. I don't think anybody is dead in, in that, in that, in among them. So you can still interview. Some of them have even retired from football and come to go back to Ghana. You can still get them to interview. But you go and choose something that happened in 79. You have to reflect. So I'm not saying that you cannot choose certain specific events. You have to also know what type of event you are studying and then how you want to study it. So the current trends are not, are not bad, but do you have enough information? Has the event itself ended? Do you know what to, to turn out turn it into? One of my students chose that he wanted to do something on the 2012, um, the 
the 2012 uh, 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 elections, after the elections, he wanted to do something on polling agents and then the machine, the voting machine. Ah, the time he started the study, all the people said don't answer, don't, 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 don't respond to the interview until the verdict is out. So you have to sit down with your master's or your PhD, sitting down waiting for a verdict to come out. If the verdict gets delayed, you are, then your, your PhD gets delayed. That is not advisable. So change, be careful of the phenomenon that is, is, itself is not, has not gained maturity. It can change and has so many variables that you can't control. And when you can't control those variables, it becomes very difficult for you to do a good PhD in that area. The sponsor, the guy tells you that a company gives you money, get fund, or get fund doesn't even insist on doing a thesis on, uh, on Beget Fund, but there are some companies that insist on doing a thesis on, on them. So when they do that, that means that you have to make sure that whatever you are doing will respond to them. But remember, the phenomenon that you may want to study, when you come and meet your supervisor, he may not be interested in that company, or he may not, the interest, the interest of the supervisor may be very different from, uh, may not necessarily fit the company. You want to study uh, accounting practices of SMEs, and the, the sponsor is an SME, it tells you that do it on their company. And the company that they are, you are, your, your, your supervisor says steady, bad accounting practices or poor. This company is excellent in accounting practices. How are you going to do the study on them? It is not as if it, it is a mismatch there. Unless you want to study, why are you not a, being poor accounting and you are doing good accounting? And now it's not a PhD. So please be very careful on, on choosing a sponsor and how you manage the sponsorship. And, and, and then your PhD. Maybe you have to do two works. One, one, one which is a study for these people and then one which is a study for the, the other people. Or you have to really find a phenomenon that your supervisor would like and it actually fits the sponsor. Then you can also do your study on the, uh, with the sponsor. Okay. Now the next point is the discrepancies in existing research which needs to be addressed. Okay, so this is where there are, where there are reasonable gaps in literature and there is a potential contribution of literature uh, uh, of uh, there's a cont potential contribution to this, to uh, knowledge in that particular area. So let me just show you an example. I wanted to show you that example earlier. Okay, so let's look at this one. This is migrate migrant women entrepreneurs and emotional encounters in policy fields. Now this is just an abstract of what the person wrote that he, he did. He said drawing on forty economic life course narrative interviews. This is a qualitative mm, with migrant women. So narrative interviews class you to phenomenology. Okay, with migrant women entrepreneurs in Sweden from 26 countries, the aim of this paper is to explore the emotions while women navigate the Swedish policy field targeting entrepreneurs and thus ask what roles do emotion play in policy fields for migrant women entrepreneurs. Now listen to where the gap is. Despite the widespread acknowledgement that emotions are central to entrepreneurial, entrepreneurs motivations and performance, the role of emotions in daily entrepreneurship remains under, under examined. Now, when somebody writes a sentence like this, this is where the gap is, and this is where the core work has been pointed out. And this gap is pointing an issue about the need to study emotions or emotional encounters in relation to entrepreneurs or migrant entrepreneurs. So he said, using the lens of emotional citizenry. So even the emotional citizenry theory or whatever uh, 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 framework is linked to the area he wants to do the research on. I explore how emotions are part of the entrepreneurial process as seen through the migrants' women's encounters with various institutional and support actors. Entrepreneurial narratives reflect an embodied and subjective subjectivity Effective subjectivity of interaction centering on individual encounters. I showed that the encounter enc that encountering a policy field is an emotional process for the migrant for migrant women entrepreneurs. Analyzed under two scopes, hoping to succeed and hoping to recognize. This study, so this is actually the um, the model he has actually presented in a very nice way. I like this person is very smart. This is the actual model he has presented in a very nice way. This study shows emo shows emotions as central to encounters in policy for and therefore impact migrant women's and migrant women's um, entrepreneurs engagement in assessing entrepreneurial resources. This paper raises questions for further research on the role of emotional citizenry to understand policy fields. This study, HR person can do it, marketing person can do it, technology person can do it. The way the study is, is very, very broad and you can look at it from different angles. But the work she's, she's done could either be lying in HR or depending on the general that was published in lying in HR or, or entrepreneurship in general, but 
what am I trying to say? There's a clear gap of what she's responding to. What gap are you going to be responding to when you start your PhD? That is why I said that was the most important point in doing a PhD. What gap are you going to be responding to? So let's go back and see another one. Let's take another one from finance. This is by a paper which I like very much by Professor Abo, and I've been using it to teach. For those of you who have taught you before, you have seen this. Corporate governance has been identified. In, this was published in 2007. The gaps are being, are being filled. If you want to do this study, you have to do a, a different study. This is 2007, so it's quite, quite old, about 17 years now, or more, even more. Oh, no, no, it's about um, 14 years. 14 years, yeah. Is that Francis? No, Gabriel. Gabriel, okay. Uh, Gabriel, are you doing finance? No, accounting. Ah, good. I, I, the person who could have calculated it very fast than accountant. So, <laughs> <laughs> corporate governance has identified, has been identified in previous studies to influence firms financing and capital structure decisions which also affect performance so he looked at the past studies and complemented what has been done in the past studies the, the first one we looked at was an abstract of somebody's work so i just wanted to show you these empirical studies tended to focus mainly on developed economies with inconclusive results that's a first a first gap the first gap is telling us that the person study the current studies on uh, on corporate governance have been on developed countries at the expense of developing so it tells you that there's no much on developing but it also tells you that the one on developing is even in developed, it's even inconclusive. So that tells you that if you want to do the study in UK, it's still allowed because it's, there's inconclusive results concerning corporate governance and capital structure decisions of firms in the, in, U, in, in the developed world. Then he goes on to say very little. So one another point you see, that I said, guys said despite, I say very little. So where does that show discrepancy or show that there is something that is missing or how in, in many works that you are going to be reading, that is how research gaps are presented. Very little. Very little, however, has been done on corporate governance in sub-Saharan Africa, especially with respect to firms financing decisions. So the gap is, has to do with corporate governance and a, a corporate governance and firms financing decisions. So corporate governance is very broad. He has taken a sub-theme sub, sub, a sub -theme in corporate governance called firms financing decisions. So you can have corporate governance and then a sub-theme in that. Then he, he then told you that even corporate governance and that particular sub team has not received much research, one gap. Then when you place it in a context called South South Africa, not that, there's nothing there, very little, another gap. Then he says in Ghana, for instance, now he's coming to practice and he's coming to what we call the present. In Ghana, for instance, economic development and restructuring have introduced modern forms of business activity and diverse financing structures like Ghana stock is in the past two decades. Now, everybody here knows that when you introduce Ghana Stock Exchange, you are increasing the financing option for firms now. So when you increase the financing option for firms, looking at the corruption that's been taking place in Ghana, you know that issues of corporate governance become very prominent. It is crucial to determine how current issues in corporate governance affect financing decisions of Ghanaian firms. So now, if you look at this variable, the gap is built on three different things. One. You have a, the gap that was pointed up, up about the fact that corporate governance and firms financing decision is a good area to research on, but the current research has focused on developed economies, so with, the, with inconclusive results. It means that the issue we have here is that the thing is an is of good research, but if you look at it in the context, the region of develop, developing economies, much research has not been done there. So you have an issue and then you have a context. So you have seen an issue gap and a context gap. The context gap means that developing countries have not received much research in that area. Then it goes on to tell you that very little, however, has been done on corporate governance in Sub-Saharan Africa. Then it looks, that's in looking at developing countries, it's broad, Asia is there, Eastern Europe is there, Middle East is there. But then what about Sub-Saharan Africa? That one has not received much research in that area. So it tells you that that, uh, that, that, that research issue you have selected needs more attention in Sub-Saharan Africa. Despite that, in practice, in the real world, in the background of the issue, in the practice of Ghana, the industry has welcomed Ghana Stock Exchange. So it has be now become very, very important looking into practice that corporate governance has to research on, especially in firms financing decisions. So you have a business or a practice occurrence, something that's happening in practice, that's Ghana Stock Exchange is happening in practice. And that one has implications on corporate governance. 
So there's a business problem that is there. Then there is a research problem. The first three sentences, corporate governance, these empirical, very little, are all on the research issue. The word in Ghana is now on the business issue. So in presenting his point as Professor Abo, being a professor in, in his own right, he takes the research problem and asks to a business problem and puts them together to establish a relevant area of research for this paper. This paper specifically examines the relation between the various variables of corporate governance and capital structure decisions of firms listed in Ghana Stock Exchange in the six-year period. This is an explanatory study. It was looking at the relation between variables. So what are we seeing here? We are seeing that there is a marriage between business problems and research problems. Keep that in mind. We'll come back to that. OK. So now let's go back. Now we, are, we, are, we, have agreed, we have all agreed that the area we should look into is the research problem. So now let's look at the research problem. What, what the research gap? What is a research gap? A research gap is an area of study that where there are reasonable gaps in the resistant literature. Or people have said that there's needs for attention in that area. Now it is the gaps that come together to establish what we call the problem of the research or the research problem. The business problem contributes to the research background. The research problem contributes to the business gap contributes to the research problem. The business problem or the business gap, the business issues will contribute to the research background. We'll come to that. When you have a research gap, you are responding to something which is important. And if a research gap is, was developed out of literature in the last seven years or the last 10 years, it's most likely, even in fact, the last seven years, most likely to be contemporary. What do I mean by that? If I pick a gap in 2000, 2015, 2000, 2000 it is likely that current research may have addressed that issue already. So we always tell students that try to pick contemporary gaps coming from relevant literature and relevant authorities in your area of research in your um, in, or in the area of your discipline. So if I take accounting, I need to pick gaps which are relevant in terms of the, uh, uh, the, the person who is putting it out of the journal that paper was published in, or, uh, or, uh, or and more importantly, the year in which the gap was pointed out as being a gap. If the paper was published in 1978, it will be very likely for me to do this as a research gap for my PhD because somebody may have addressed it. There are only few few outliers where you can have a, a gap going dating back to 1970 and it has still not been addressed or not be addressed exhaust, exhausted in, in the manner that has to be exhausted. So at the end of the day, there's still room for you to to mention that gap, but you still have to show that there have been attempts to address it, but it has not been well done. So when I read your gap, it tell it I tell it makes me think about who are you responding to, or are you just duplicating previous research? What is your potential contribution? So there is a general, unless I'm coming, there is a general called general financial crime, very very high ranking general. If I pick the a gap from the general financial crime. And then there's a journal in maybe, let's say, uh, one of the a university in Ghana called uh, um, Stronger University. And that Stronger University comes out with a journal. And somebody publishes in it and says that it's a gap in also financial crime issues. Hmm. I'd rather take the one from financial crime as a journal, which has been, it's in the 46th edition, than rather come and take it from the one which is recently been, being launched. The reason being the fact that the likelihood of rigor and academic attention by my audience of my research is going to be in the financial crime because globally that one is known. Please, you are just doing your PAD, listen carefully. You are just doing your PAD in the University of Ghana and in Ghana as a country, but the PAD is a scholarship that attests to you for a discipline globally globally not just don't do something that makes you a local champion your phd should make you an international champion so that when you go for international 
international uh, uh, presentations or to conferences, people will listen to you, not because you're coming from Ghana, because the issue you are dealing with, even if you're dealing with in Ghana, it is still contemporary relevant to Latin America. It's still contemporary relevant to the BRICS. It's still con con contemporary relevant to India. So an Indian professor will sit down and listen to you. You can't choose a PhD that is locally oriented and local thinking. Everything is so local about it that it doesn't, and in fact, it doesn't become a PhD. It becomes a consultancy. Please think about it carefully. You are thinking about something, you are choosing something that should come from weightier journals or weightier faculty. So that at the end of the day, when you look at it and you mention that your PhD gap is coming from this area, everybody will believe you that this is an area of research to be researched on. When you come to me and tell me I do a PhD and you mention what you are doing, I say, who says that place is important? In fact, finding a gap is not even just the only issue. Why is that gap relevant? There can be so many gaps. But why is that gap relevant? What would we lose if we don't address that gap? That is more important for us to address. Look at what Prof. Abbott did. A very excellent professor. He said something. I'll come to this. He said something here. Look at what Professor Abbott said. He said, in Ghana, for instance, so the thing is really relevant in Sub-Saharan Africa, but he said, in Ghana, for the instance, something is happening in Ghana. So if we don't do research in this area right, right now, Ghanaians, Ghanaians will lack the knowledge of managing corporate governance issues with capital structure decisions in, 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 in now. So we need that knowledge. We need that knowledge. Why do we need your knowledge? Why do you need the logic? Now, please, this may be the best lecture you have ever had in your PhD program. The reason that because people choose things that has, it is a gap, but it is not important. It is not relevant. It is not going to change anything in the world, even if we address it. Make sure the gap that you choose, will, will, there'll be a lacuna of knowledge if that is not addressed. So make sure that is there, it's clear, that if I don't address this thing, Nobody will say, every, everybody will see that there's something is lost in, 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 in knowledge. Something is lost in, 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 in understanding something in practice and understanding something in, 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 in literature. Please keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Yes, uh, Alex, let your question flow before I move on to my next point. Uh, good morning, Prof. Good morning. Please be snappy about it. Too. I'm, I'm, I'm really on fire today, so don't come and question me. All right. <laughs> anyway, I want to ask a question on the, what's the name, the research gap. Mm -hmm. so as much as possible, the, the gap should be contemporary. That has always been my issue because in the area of my study, for example, which is finance, you have so many papers from the 60s to whatever. So at what point in time, if you like, what should be the, the, the starting point? You didn't hear me. I said last seven years. I said the last seven years. If you're picking a gap, try to stay within the last seven years. Starting from 20, look, think about it. You like, let's, let's take a minute. Let me show you a very simple, simple mathematics. You are a person who started his PhD now. You may finish in four years' time. So this year is 2021. You finish in 2025, let's say, plus or minus 2025. Now, if you finish in 2025 and you pick your gap, Today you are starting your work. You pick your gap from, I say seven years. So se seven years from 2020, uh, 2021. Seven years going backwards. Gabriel, what is it? 2015. 2015. 20, 2014. 2013. 2014. 2014. You are in 2021 minus seven. Why are you saying 2020? 2014. 20, 2014. If you pick a gap in 2014, that and you end up finishing the thesis. Think of you finish your thesis in 20, 20, uh, 20, what, 20, Five. 25. 25. Minus 2014, how many years? 11. Mm. It is not wrong, go. I want to <laughs> do somebody's thesis, but it is likely that whilst you're doing your PhD, people will answer the question. That's what I'm trying to tell you. It's likely that whilst you're doing your PhD, so if you pick it so, so much behind, start publishing from the finding the solution now so that you have publications coming up to, to the 2025 is up. Otherwise, by the time you are at that time, that time, people have moved away from that area. It is important that you come a little bit closer. So around the last 25 years, around the last three years, so that when you look at it in the front, it will still be relevant. Now, it could also be the fact that you can pick something in 2020, 2014, but you find it being iterated in 2017, being echoed again in 2020. So now you have got three occurrences in the literature. 
So your work is not looking that bad. It's looking good because you are showing that since 2014, attempts at addressing this have been piecemeal. So there's still need for research in the area. I began my PhD in 2002. The gaps I picked up, they were picking, I picked up from my, from my work, they were coming from 2002 and 2003. But by the time I was going to submit around 2008, um, I think, for, is it for 2002? Hey, I've now forgotten. So 2002 plus four, 2002. Good. So around 2006, around 2006, there I finished my PhD in 2004. Yes, so 2004, I started in 2004. My master's I started in 2002. So 2004, I started my, my PhD. So my gaps were 2002, good, and 2003. Then by the time I got to the final year, somebody showed me a paper in 2006 that clearly said the same thing that they should be done, but in China. And I added it to my work. So when I went to my, my, my defense, I said, they have only four papers, four papers, four papers that have used the same theory in a developing country. I mentioned the papers names and I mentioned what each of them did. And I told you that this shows you that even among all, among all these four, none of them is Africa. So what I'm doing from Africa tells you that I'm applying the theory in this particular area in Africa, first timer. Every, everybody knows that I'm the first person to do that. And it is true by the citations I have in that paper. So what? What are you doing that makes you stand out? There were only four papers, one in China, one in Ecuador, and one in Mexico. I was the person, by the time I finished my PhD, people have started doing some little things about it, in there, but nobody had done a thorough research. What is a thorough research? Empirical research with starting from one end to the other. All those people have been using the term and mentioned it in one way or the other, but they have not done anything to build a model. I came to do that. So when you look at my work, it is clear. But the day I was doing my defense, the guy who came to look at my defense, the examiner, when he came, they told me that your PhD, somebody had now started it in another university. And he told him that, he told the guy that morning that uh, you are doing e-business. There's somebody is doing it in Manchester. Go and talk to the guy because what you are doing, the guy has answered, or answered it already. Go and find out the gaps in his study. The ones he has left so that you can start from there. Otherwise, you, by the time you finish, it's the same thing in Ghana, you have a problem. And the guy came to see me and I helped him. So I'm just trying to let you understand that the, you, you, whilst you are doing your PhD, somebody is also doing a PhD. And right now the PhD is a, 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 a bus, like everybody is joining the bus. So you don't think that you're the first person in finance doing a research in the area. Choose something unique and do it early and announce yourself early. That's another lecture. Try to uh, remind me that I'll teach you, I'll, I'll do a lecture on how to announce yourself. Announce yourself early from yes, the first year. You should announce yourself. After some of you in MIS, you have announced yourself last semester. The world has gotten to know you. Announce yourself early so that people know that you are the one doing the research in the area. They will start sending the papers to you, sending ideas to you, and then you are known that you are the authority that is in, in, in the making. The authority in the making. Anyway, so there are, three, there are a number of different types of gap. The first gap is the issue gap. That's the one we have been seeing. And the context gap. The issue is, is less represented in literature, it's, it's under examined and needs to be examined. Or it is not examined in the geographic region, like developed economies, like we saw in Profabo's statement. So it needs to be researched on. So those are two types of gaps. The other gap, type of gap is a theory gap. Sometimes the theory itself has not received much attention in a particular context, or even in the literature. Or the theory itself has got gaps in the theory. What do I mean by that? Sometimes a theory has got inconclusive discussions in it. When people use it to do their work, they say that, ah, it seems that if you, are, if you apply it in this other sense, you need another variable to add to it. So it tells you that the theory itself has got, it's unstable. It needs some stability by looking, doing more research in that area. So most people will tell you that future research should apply the theory in a different context or a different issue or a different industry to test the findings we have so far and to be able to see whether the variables we are saying will hold or new variables should be added. So that's where the theory gaps come in. Then we also have a method gap. Sometimes the method of the study, you have you seen that sometimes you read a paper and they're written a case study approach, a, a structural question modeling approach. The reason why they emphasize the approach is that sometimes the gap itself is in the approach, the kind of method they did, also a, gen, a gendered perspective or something. You look at gender. So it's looking at a particular, uh, coming from a particular demographic. So those ones tells you that there's a gap from that demographic or there's a gap from that, that particular age group maybe generate in marketing and in MIS and other business fields, you have got something called the generational theory, where you have the Gen Y, the Gen Z, the Gen, Gen X, the baby boomers and the silent boom generation. That type of generational studies is not done in Africa at all. That they don't have much in Africa. Ghana, they're not there. So we need more in Ghana. Mm -hmm. So I remember one person presented his work to me last two semesters and he's a PhD guy looking at something concerning um, fraud. And as soon as he was looking at it and in terms of, um, 
uh, uh, how Nigeria and Ghana who will be more likely to do certain types of fraud. It's not about cyber crime. It's about fraud in the office and fraud in the workplace or something like that. And I don't know. Have you looked at the? Have you examined the gender, the the generational perspective? Whether some generations are more likely to do than others. So the generational part is a very welcome perspective. Recently, we did some work for MTN. They wanted generation, the generation understand because they don't know what is happening with the Gen Z concerning their products in certain regions in Ghana. So they were happy about the regional studies, but they wanted us to know, let them know that if you go to the um, 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 Tamale, what do different age groups think about our product? So that is what I'm telling. The generational concept is important for both practitioners and, uh, um, and practitioners and academics. So please, it's a perspective that you may look into. Perspective. Last semester, I saw one of my one of the students, Reginald, in HR, who had done a paper on uh, one of the generations and, uh, and looking at another uh, leadership um, and, uh, uh, theory or leadership perspective. Well, and he, he, he shared it with the class because I was echoing the same thing. So that's a that's something that you may want to look into. So you can either look at the method, whether quantity or quality can be con can be a contribution, or you can even look at mixed method, or you can look at experiments. Some studies are better than an experiment. Or you can look at it from maybe panel study. Many, most of the studies there are cross-sectional. There's a need for longitudinal studies that use panel data. I can, um, the finance people can understand what I'm trying to say. So you may want to look into that. So th there are or use time series to look at it in a longitudinal sense. How something has changed over time. So please, there are so many perspectives that you can come from. Then you have got a level of analysis gap. The level of analysis gap has to do with what level are we analyzing at? Sometimes the issues are, are analyzed at the micro level. We believe individuals. Sometimes we look at it at the meso level, looking at corporates, firms, and, inst and, and institutions. Then you can look at at the macro level, look at the government, and that or, or macro level institutions. Or we can look at the meta level. We are looking at meta level institutions like ECOWAS, like the UN, like WHO. Or like uh, like a cross country study, or a cross nation nation study, or a regional study comparing Nigeria, Ghana, and South Africa, that kind of stuff. So that's at the meta level. So the same thing can be studied can be studied at different levels too. So some of the students in finance who are doing oil and gas, they like to pick a uh, uh, data that has been published already, and then they try to do a modeling based on different countries and try to tell the story of Ghana in comparison with other countries. So that's a very interesting study at the meta level. You see, at the meta level, you can do interesting perspectives of an issue. So don't think that the area, you see, most of the students think is, is about having a phenomenon of study. It is the gap around the phenomenon that makes somebody's work different from your work. I can give all of you a study that all of us will study SDGs. We are all doing our studies on SDGs. But everybody will ask a different question. Everybody will ask a different question. That makes our PhD different. So that's the level of analysis gap. Now, we've just said, where do you find the gaps? You find the gaps in two places. At the beginning, hey, I want only one hour, one hour left, so let's go. At the beginning of the of the of the of the paper, the introduction of the paper, that's the general article you are reading. At the end, where the future direction. The one at the beginning, the person is telling you the gaps he came to meet, and why that paper is trying, how that paper is going to try to address those gaps, or which of the gaps is he going to address. The one at the end is telling you that. There are gaps that he has left. You couldn't address all by, by the by virtue of this paper, by the implications of this paper. There is a need for future studies to look at here and here. Question is that which of them should you use for your PhD? Both. Because sometimes somebody can look at a gap, and you have chosen the same area of study. You want to do the same thing the person, but you have to know what in this, empowered him and give him an instruction or direction to start the area, research in the area. So look at his gap, and pick his own gap, and go and add it to the one he has said at the back. At the end of the paper, and then combine it to make a very solid gap. So don't just pick the gap that you have just seen at the end of the paper. The one in the beginning of the paper, he may not have addressed it full, or he may address it in maybe in India, but there's a need for more studies in different emerging contexts. So you're gonna be an emerging country, so an emerging economy. It is very good for you to pick the same thing and come and test in Ghana. Then you can then to, to go on, you can then check what variables he look into in India. What can I add to the variable? What did he say we should add to the variable? Sometimes somebody can say that change the way I did my questionnaire or replicate it. Even said that some people are not even confident that their results are perfect enough. So they said, okay, even though we have said this thing, we think that before we can make solid conclusions concerning the issue, we should have a different perspective. So it is good for people to do studies in a different economic context to compare with my findings. So let's take an example from an accounting paper and a marketing paper. Okay. 
So taking an example for an accounting paper and a marketing. Please, if you have any question, now that we have a break, you are going to look for papers, you can ask the question whilst we go for that. Okay. So this is a paper. Yes, Prof. Yes, please, please talk. Prof, yes. so, um, yeah, I want to ask um, how, how many, I know you can use a combination of the gaps. So for example, it, the gap could be methodological. It could also be based on the jurisdiction where you argue that in Ghana or in, in younger democracies, uh, such phenomenon has not been well studied and so on and so forth. I know you can use a combination of that in, in your work. Now I'm asking, uh, how many of them should be enough for a PhD? Can I just center my gap on just one, which would be perhaps the methodology or the jurisdiction or a combination of them would be most preferred? Okay, so with a PhD, you need a complex gap. That means a combination, you can't use this one. Why? Because whatever it is, you are going to, it's a, it's a, a, a doctor of philosophy. So there's going to be a theoretical contribution you are contributing to. So what theory will be one when you should keep in mind? What issue? It should be one. The method and other ones can come in to just support. So by all, because those things are very important. Somebody can call, PAD, will, a person can pick issue, combine it to method and add theory. The context is a given. The context gap is the weakest gap for a PAD student. Because it is not like a master student, because it has not been done in Ghana. That's why I'm doing it. Because everybody can say that's not been in Ghana. A lot of things have not been done. So everything you can find in the studies, it has not been done in Ghana, that's what I'm doing. No, that's not why you should do a PhD. You're not contributing because of Ghana. Why is it that Ghana is interesting for you, for, you to, for you to do a study in that area? So please, Ghana is the last thing for you to see for a PhD. Ghana is the last thing for you to see. Because there are a lot of developing countries. Why are you interested in Ghana? So the issue should more about your context, the, the method, and then the, the issue, the context, the issue, the theory, and then the method. But it's not always that the method will be an, an, an addition. And then you have got primary gaps and secondary gaps. The primary gaps is the one that the PhD is hint on. The secondary gaps mean that by doing this, I may have also addressed those other ones. Because some of the gaps are weak on their own. They need to combine with others before they can, address, they can be addressed. For example, the method gaps are, for instance, are, 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 are in particular. You cannot actually address the method gap without having an issue. So you have to do an you have a, you have a theory, then the method will be addressed. But you see, you are not a mathematician trying to develop an, an, an algorithm where the method gap then becomes much more the, the focus. It's not that's what you're doing. For example, in finance, you have got the DEA approach. Now, data enveloping. If that's what you want to do is study, then if you want to contribute to data enveloping, then note know that you have to do a section of your work that reveals that area and tells us the weaknesses or the benefits of doing DEA and why and, and DA has not been done in developing country research, and why what we are losing because you're not done DA. So that is why you are doing your study. Then that means that the argument starts from the primary one being the DA, the method. But if it is not your primary argument, don't then make it become the one. It's one the one that will add on to and make your work solid. For example, if I look at complex relationships that you just mentioned that the age and all those kind of stuff, you can't do it qualitative, you need to do quantitative. Quantitative are dimensions, different types of uh, quantitative methodologies. So which of them will add onto the theorization and the robustness of the model? Structure equation modeling. So now the structure equation modeling you are using is good, but you are not the first person to use structure equation modeling in the way you are doing it. However, in structure equation modeling, modeling there's something called series analysis, where uh, uh, ser uh, serial mediation, where you have double mediators in the middle. Oh my God. You have got double, please, the guy who is talking to you. In such a question, you have got serial mediation where you have got two mediators in the middle, uh, building upon each other. So it's like, let me use this as an example. You start from um, 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 a variable A goes to B, C before it gets to D. So B and C are in the middle, which are serial mediators. So the serial mediation may be the first time that it's being used for the phenomenon, and that could be your contribution. Do you understand me? Then you emphasize why serial mediation will make the work different from the previous structure and creation modeling method that was just doing just normal mediation. So I've chosen the issue, I've chosen what I want to do, but now I came to talk about serial mediation, which people didn't look at. That is another one approach. So then sometimes the variable, the way you conceptualize it, sometimes you may realize that some people's variables are, are seen as a, a, 
a, a unidimensional variable. But you are the first person breaking the variable down into a multidimensional variable, like trust, breaking it down to uh, uh, competence, integrity, and then um, what's the other one? There's, there's a third one. So all of the three of the variables come together to be able to make trust. So if you are looking at it, you break trust into these three, it will make it different from another another uh, another person's work. Hence, the method can be contributory, can, can contribute and be part of the PhD. If I'm coming from the method angle, then I'll be looking at multidimensionality of my, of my variables, or I'll be looking at the the method I want to use. is something special about the method. What if all the current studies have done use social equation modeling, but they have done it using um, 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 PLS, but there are some strengths that this other one has, the Amos has, that you people have not been doing. So you come from the Amos angle, but you have to argue it out well, and that to be solid argument, so that you can be able to put it across. Are we okay? Are we okay? Yes, bro, thank yes. you. Open, are you, no, open, are you confused? Well, please, I'm okay. Well, I, I, a little confused. I know you're confused because you have been thinking. Probably, about probably I have a question. So now you have a question. When I tell you you're confused, okay. Yes, so bro. I tell you you're confused. I know you'll be confused. So I'm telling you you're confused. Anyway, yes, bro. Yes, well, please, can I go ahead? Yes, go ahead. You are already confused. Bro, please, it's about the research gaps. Mm -hmm. Um, I remember I was at a, a Viva where one of the examiners was asking the candidates that. Where exactly did you see that there was a future research that says you should do this? And it appears that uh, the candidates did not specifically have any, any place in, in literature that was pointing to that gap. But he had done a review of literature and realized that this aspect of um, a particular study had not been done within the context of Ghana. And that was his basis for for deciding to go into it. So my question is that, do you always need to find a gap written in uh, in literature before you can address it in a PhD? No, because it's not every time that you find it in the literature like that. When you, that's why you don't start research, searching and selecting a topic from, from, your, from, from just the literature that you have just seen. You have to review and do a synthesis of the literature. So when you do a literature review, you should be able to review the literature and identify the gaps. So I've seen PhD that tells you that in a review of the literature, we came up with this. Joseph, Joseph was saying that in his work, we came up with this and saw this number of gaps in the literature because he didn't have an existing review to rely on or somebody clearly. So it is when he did the review that he began to see the differences in the studies. So you said that see, see chapter two for the full review. Okay, you Yes, Paul. You not always have it like that, so you have to create, you have to find it out, and that's what makes the work analytical. How can you always think that somebody will state it for you? You have to make put two or two or three together. For example, if you read somebody's work, and you keep on seeing that the person is collecting data here and here and here and came up with this finding, the model is good, but the model has not been used anymore, and it's, it has to be used. So you point out that since then it has not been used. But the question that you need to answer is that why is that gap important? That is different from find the gap is there, but why is it important? What will happen to my, um, um, the study of uh, 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 accounting practice if we don't do that gap? If nothing will happen, then we don't need that gap. We don't need to address the gap. Even roadside are, are spots in Ghana. If they are trying to repair them, there is parity where they start. But why do you choose a particular area to start when there are a lot of gaps in the world? Yes, bro. bro. Bro, please, I have a question. Okay. Hey, prof. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you go ahead. Yes. So, Prof, my, I, I, maybe this will be like a little bit of a drawback, but please pardon me. Please, I, you pay the, you pay the school fees, so it's not a drawback. <laughs> <laughs> please, my, my, my major problem is this: How do you establish a theory gap in, 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 in a research work? Do so that's you why you have to, to allow me. To, you have to allow me to go, go, go ahead, so that you can, you can see it. Okay, because usually I get confused. I don't know whether you need to pick different conceptual frameworks and analyze them or pick different theories, you know, and see if you can establish a gap in them. So 
maybe I should allow you to go on and then you would explain. Right now, the way you have asked the question, I have to stop and explain it. So let me just stop and explain it. Last week, I told you that you guys should go and find my PhD to look at. So that would, give you, that would have given you an explanation of the issue. So this is my PhD. I want to show you something in my research problem. So the, the Manchester at that time, the time I was doing my PhD, it was called motivation for research. The research problem was called motivation for research. Please, can you see? Gentlemen, can you see? Yes, bro. Yes, bro. Yes, bro. Yes, bro. Those who are asleep, wake up, wake up. We are now even starting the teaching. <laughs> okay, so now listen to what is happening. The aforementioned examples of accounts demonstrate DC firms, they are developing country firms, using accessible resources internally within the firm and abroad to address and circumvent the constraints of their context and realize e commerce benefits. These studies, among other extant, extant uh, e commerce research in DC, are a mix of empirical and non empirical work. They have employed several theoretical frameworks from ah. various disciplines, such as information system management and social sciences. Yes, it's core definitely. research, core research contributions include conceptual core research contributions include conceptual and evaluation frameworks that examine both the relative potential e-commerce in DCs and the means to achieve the potential. See chapter two. That was I was telling you earlier. Now look at, despite these studies about e-commerce, there's comparatively little research conducted on how DC firms deploy and develop, deploy and manage resources to realize e-commerce benefits. A prevailing paradigm for understanding how firms develop capability to gain and sustain competitive advantage, and moreover adapt and even capitalize on rapidly changing technological environment is the resource-based view of the firm or the resource-based theory. And its later extension, the dynamic capabilities approach, a survey of, of literature on e-commerce in DC, C chapter two, identified the application of these three theories in only four studies. Remember, I just mentioned it right now. Montelegre, 2002, Garcia Marillo, 2004, Zhu and Kramer, 2005, and Sue et al, 2006. So it means that every year I was doing my PhD. There, there was, I started in 2004. So almost, almost 2005, 2006, okay. Garcia Marillo used the theory in studying. So I can, I can talk about what they did. Then after that, I pointed out that these studies highlight a number of gaps. First of, first of all, what did Garcia say? Garcia say pointed out that there is exist, there exists a mismatch between the realities of DC firms and the West, as long as Western models of enterprise, such as Porter's 1990 recommendation. That's proposing that organizational practices evolve. So more research is needed to redefine existing knowledge to be consistent and applicable to dynamic dynamic nature of the environment. So I mentioned the gaps that are in all of them. Then I come to, while, while this research, while with this little research, very strong claims cannot be made about resources, e-commerce and DC firm until further research has been done. To guide, okay, more, moreover, there exists some knowledge gaps in the application of resource-based theory to information system, which is, new research, which this which new research can fill by adopting resource-based theory as the underpinning framework to guide the future resource-based theory and information systems research. Extant research have emphasized two gaps of concern to this research, of, of concern to this research. Like there are a lot of things that are there. First, whether information systems resources like infrastructure and technical skills must interact with other constructs like non-IS resources to be able to create benefits. Now, what am I trying to say? These are the gaps with the theory. The gaps with the theory, what I've read from people who have used the theory in their work. So every theory that you use, you use in your work, there are people who are published using that theory. Sometimes in their conclusion, <coughs> they mention that even though we did this study and did this study, there are still some um, inconclusiveness about certain issues about the theory and future research will address it. So when you find your issue, it is good. Then you reveal your issue to know the theory that have and used to understand your, 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 the issue. There are two things that can happen. You can find either theories that have been used to address your issue, and then some of the theories need more studies. That is one. Or you may find that 
the existing theories that are used for addressing your issue that you have found are looking at only one dimension of your issue. They don't look at other dimensions. So to be able to do the other dimensions you are interested in, you need another theory, which is not linked to the work you are doing. Go and pick from social science and come and add to the existing one you have to get your work done. So it is all about your review. What have you read? And what does the reading tell you? What have you read and what does the reading tell you? Oh, but make this paper, this book, uh, this one available to them. The gentleman who just asked the question, when you read this particular research problem, you understand it very well. And look, I study this work, you understand what I'm trying to say. So there is a gap that tells your issue. There's a gap that tells you issues, uh, uh, that tells your issue, that, uh, that tells you gaps. There's a gap that tells your issue. Then there are gaps that are the theory, but coming in pertaining to your issue. Then there are gaps concerning the theory without your issue. When you are contributing to your theory, you can contribute to both of them. The one that is in relation to your issue, that resource-based theory and information system. And the one that is in relation to resource-based theory on its own as a management theory. So I contributed to both. One with the information systems area and one on the theory itself without information system. So now people are citing my work doing resource-based theory research without even linking it to information system. Because what I found is contributory to contribute to the theory without the risk information systems. The information system is just a vehicle to contribute to the work, to the theory, sorry. Do you understand me? The gentleman, do you understand me? Hello? Yeah. Yes, Prof. Okay. So look yes, at here, he identified two main research gaps. First, limited application of resource-based theory to e-commerce in developing countries, one. And two, second, some gaps in application of resource-based theory to information systems. So if you look at here, I'm talking about how the, the gaps are. The gaps has to do with the resource-based theory to e-commerce in developing countries. And then the gap has to do with another resource-based theory to information systems. Okay, so let's go back to accounting. Accounting people have been waiting for what I will say. So accounting, this is a paper on introduction of accounting practices in small business, small family business. Everybody who is here, small family business needs more research in Ghana, in Africa. We don't do much research in this area. So anything you do, you can look at small family business. It's a good area. Recently, I think three years ago, I, I, I chaired somebody's Viva for marketing and you know, do some kind of small family businesses uh, 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 or family family owned businesses. But they're small from, you see, whilst you have small SME, um, SMEs, small and medium enterprise, you also have small and medium enterprise, which are only, who have, which are family businesses. This person focuses on that one. So he has, uh, let's go straight, is, now he starts for introduction. This research investigation. Now Americans like writing like this, they like writing, it's a style that American journals and stuff do. They like to tell you what they are doing from the beginning straight and even tell you what they found in the introduction. It's not wrong, it's done to academic papers. But it depends on the audience of your journal. So let's continue. Oh. This research investigates the introduction of accounting practices into small family businesses. This exploratory study includes five case studies of businesses in Mexico, another one in USA. For each of the cases, we conducted interviews with the family. So just, just telling you what the work did. Now let's go to the first paragraph, the, the, the second paragraph. The success of small business is relevant for any country, given their impact on the economy. In USA, businesses employing fewer than 500 em employees account for half of the country's economy and half of the private sector's employees. Similar patterns are observed around the world. So it's, 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 it's establishing the business problem, listing very carefully, the business problem. Although the success of the small firm depends on many factors, both external and internal, the implementation, implementation of sound accounting practices is critical for any firm's survival and the growth. Despite this, the process of introducing accounting practices in small business remains poorly understood, with only a, a small number of studies addressing what? What are they addressing? Hello? The issue. The issue. The issue. So you see what that is. We are addressing the introduction of accounting practices into small businesses. Good. So they're addressing the issue. Remember, I just mentioned what you call issue gap. You see that is there. Yes. Addressing the issue. So the gap is with what? The issue. Then he goes on to explain what small family businesses are. 
Then he goes, you see, this one is has to do with accounting practice. Now look at what he's going to say again. The accounting discipline has only a limited understanding of how accounting practices are introduced into small business. Now there's no family here. Mm -hmm. And the other one too at the top here too, there's no family here. So the gap is now just at uh, small businesses. Small business level. And so listen very carefully. Accounting discipline. Now you look at the discipline. First of all, you just talked about so you, you came from a small business angle. The first paragraph you see, the paragraph here, the gap is coming from the literature on small business. The paragraph here, the gap is coming from the literature on accounting. So you have the issue and you have the discipline. Oh my. I'm teaching you. Hey. <laughs> you have the issue and you have got the discipline. So please, Francis, listen carefully. You have an issue. The problem can be with an issue. Then you also have to look into the discipline. I just showed you for my PhD. I talked about the issues in e-commerce and I also talked about the discipline information systems. Otherwise, you can finish a PAD that the issue is relevant, but it doesn't have, uh, it's not welcome in the discipline. The PAD is given in the discipline, not in the issue. The PAD is given where? In the discipline. So if you do your, choose your issue, Issue can go, that's why I say issue, the way issues are, they can go to anybody's field of research. Is your discipline discussing that thing or need to discuss it? That is what you need to ask yourself. Despite this process, introducing accounting practice to small business remains poorly understood, with only a, a small number of studies addressing the issue. That's the small business literature. All the discussions there was about small business. Then you come to the accounting. The accounting discipline has only a limited understanding of how accounting practices are introduced to small business. One gap. And in family businesses, another gap, with only a few studies focusing on small family business, a third gap. Oh my, so you see what he's doing here? He's now told us small businesses, family, and then small family businesses. So he has established that there is a gap in small business. Tick. So World Bank will come and look for him. There's a gap in family businesses, which is uh, pertaining to developing countries a lot. Tick. Now when there's family business, and family businesses are big, like a but there are some family businesses which are small. Nobody's looking at that one. Big again, tick. This paper was published in 2017. The gaps are coming from two, 2000. That means that has not been addressed though. 2007, 2013. You see how they have been, they have, they have been used well. Remember I told you that don't just go and lie in 2000. You have to be very careful that you can get some contemporary ones to support you. So it, he has spread it very well. So in the family business, as, as since 2007, we don't know much. 2005, we don't know much. Then in the family, in the family business, we don't know much in, since 2013. But in the small family business, that one is even worse. Since 2007 and 2005. Then in the small business, so it means that even the small business, somebody tried to address the small business by looking into family businesses, small family businesses in 2027, 2007, and 2005. But then when they, they see that we have not had much, then somebody went to small business and family businesses here. It is known that accounting practices in small family business are different from those in which family members are not involved. This is called, this is what we call illustration. I'll teach you how to write later. You see the thing is here, look at the reference. Lemma and Durez, Durandes. Do you see it here? The person is not yeah. illustrating what is in the paper because when you put it here, you don't know what is in the paper. Yeah, just put it there. But he has to show you what the illustration. So he illustrates in the next sentence by saying that it is known that accounting practices in small family business are different from which is literature from small family business. This one, the Lemma, Lemma's paper. So he puts Lemma's paper here and for you to know that this is what is coming from Lemma's paper. If we aim to assist small family business, this is where you come in. This is where the interest, your personal interest, you, 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 you as an individual, your background issue. If like, like let's say Francis, sorry, I'm using your. Mouth. So if Francis say I want to help small credit union, which is his personality thing like doing, this is where you come and see. But he should have established the issue in the in the literature first. If we aim to assist small family businesses by introducing sound accounting practices, we should have a clear understanding of the dynamics of this type of organization. Such an understanding can guide the development. What did I tell you? Doing the knowing the gap is not enough, but telling us why the gap matters. Why the gap matters? Why the gap matters is more important. Such understanding can guide development of public policies to support financial viability of small family businesses by incorporating relevant accounting practices into their practices. 
our investigation extends. Now, if I do this work, what will happen? He has told you what will happen in practice. Have you ever heard of the uh, 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 significance to practice, significance to research? This is what he's doing. Significance to practice, he has given it to you. Now, let me give you significance. Uh, and to policy, bro. Yes, and, yeah, and we are coming. To policy. Yeah, we are going there. But, but this, you, 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 let's get there from practice and policy is, they are usually, usually related because sometimes it's not everybody that goes to practice. Sometimes the people go to policy straight. Like the one I showed you earlier, the woman who is doing something about policy, the migrant entrepreneurs. Our investigation extends previous research on accounting practice in small businesses by adding the complexities of family involvement in the business. Oh my, interesting. So one way in which family firms differ from other firms is the degree to which non-economic factors affect basic decision by owners of firm. Such non-economic factors include emotion, values, and altruism. Then he said that the combined effect of such factors are labeled as social, socio-emotional wealth. We use socio-emotional wealth theory. Oh, to understand how accounting practices are introduced. You see how the theory now comes in to justify where he's going to. So he didn't say there was a theory gamble, but he's trying to tell you that in addressing the research gap, we need a theory that will respond to the issue. That's what I was telling you right now. The other woman going to also use emotional something theory. You see this emotion, emotion is, a, is an upcoming thing that everybody needs to be looking into. That, mm -hmm. that I told some students that they should have to start looking into how people respond to um, information online using em emotional icons. The ones that say, I like, I, I, I dislike, and all this kind of stuff. Because it also shows the psychological state of the person. So we use socio-emotional social wealth theory to understand how, and that somebody can put this theory to, to be applied to a different sector. How accounting practices are introduced into small family businesses. Our results suggest, okay, now he's telling about his results and stuff. Okay, so this is one direction in which I think you can look into if you are looking for um, contribution to research, contributing. Uh, and the, the gap we saw here has to do with the the, uh, the issue and then the demographic, the demographic characteristics of the firm, that being the small firm and the family firm. So it's a it's an issue a method gap, issue a method gap. And then he brought in a theory to support what he's doing. So now let's go and look at another one. Any questions so far? Lady Ajua, are you okay? Yes, bro. Okay. Um, uh, this chair of plan behavior. Let's look at the migrant one that we were looking at earlier. Okay, please, can you see my screen? Yes, bro. Okay, so the first part here, from beginning here to this is the background. The next part is the, the research um, the research problem. So let's quickly go through this and I'll show you the relationship between the two. I'm not going to lie, this year has been fun. Sometimes it's good to start with a, with a quote. My PhD like this, I started with a quote. I'm, I'm not going to lie, a, a lie. This year has been fun. It's been hell and it's been a lot of laughs and a lot of cries. It's been like, I'm going to, am I going to quit or am I going to continue? It's a roller coaster. People think it's so romantic. It's not romantic at all. Alicia, never alone. Okay, I think this is a quote from data, the data I collected on the field. For some, migration is a time to begin a new business and entrepreneurship is often presented in as a pathway to the labor force. Sweden has a long history. We are doing, we are doing the problem. We are presenting the business problem, the business problem, the problem in the practice. So you see every year will be statistics and things concerning the issues in the context. So look at it, listing very carefully. Sweden has a long history of corporate, large corporations such, such as IKEA, Volvo, Ericsson, Electrolux, among others, shaping the local business environment. Of late, Sweden has garnered international attention as a hub for startup and small business. Small businesses are thriving in Sweden, especially in the major urban centers such as Stockholm and more, more specifically in areas in key sectors such as technology design and innovation. However, a, deep, a deeper examination of entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial trends reveals a heterogeneous landscape with micro, migrant entrepreneurs and particularly women experiencing Sweden entrepreneurial boom quite differently. This is coming from practice again. Women entrepreneurs who start and manage their own businesses struggle with securing financing, credit, and other essential support. Somebody can do the same study and study Nigerians, Nigerian, the Nigerian community in Ghana and how the businesses they have been doing. 
it, it might not necessarily have to focus on women, but it could have been good study for somebody to do. Okay. And the entrepreneurship is increasingly understood as, a, as contingent on us. Hey, sorry. For migrants to be entrepreneurs, the, the challenges are amplified as migrant entrepreneurs must be embedded locally. And entrepreneurship is increasingly understood as contingent on and within the local context. In Europe, now after giving the Sweden background, you go to Europe and give some statistics from Europe. If you saw the other one, the person gave um, the, the, the one from, I just want to show you something, you didn't see it, so maybe let me just show it to you. Look at this one from, um, um, from the small business. Look at what he said. This was all about US. He gave statistics about US. He said similar patterns can be observed around the world. So whenever you are positioning your work, don't just position it in the context that you are coming from. He look at the US and then look at it in, around the world. This lady now looked at Sweden and went to bring an example from Europe. So just keep that in mind. So women in, in Europe, women entrepreneurs comprise approximately 30% of entrepreneurs, with Sweden having one of the lowest rates at 6%. In Sweden, less than 1% of the venture capital goes to women entrepreneurs compared to 2% in the US. Good. However, women entrepreneurs generally receive wide support from range of, a range of institutions. A migrant woman entrepreneur must engage with services and support as part of their entrepreneurial development. Despite, now the gap is coming. Despite, research gap, the research gap is coming. Despite, not coming despite, too. despite widespread <laughs> acknowledgement. It seems everybody likes using despite. That's why I'm saying that. Despite widespread <laughs> acknowledgement that emotions may be central to the, the entrepreneur's motivation and, and, and performance. Look at the paper. 2017 and 2009. The paper was published in what? 2019. The gap is coming maximum 10 years. Do you get me? Do you understand me? The paper was submitted in 2019. See it down here. Those of you are not seeing, look at it down here. Can you see? Okay, can you see? Yes, bro. Yes, bro. Yes, yes, yes. yes bro. Bro. Okay. The role of emotions in entrepreneurship remains under examined. Moreover, in entrepreneurship, the close proximity between the individual and the entrepreneurial project is taken for granted. That's another <laughs> interesting perspective, another way of presenting another gap. The role of the close proximity between the individual and the entrepreneurial project is taken for granted. When this relationship has been a, when this relationship has been explored in literature, it has been tied to certain outcomes in entrepreneurial performance, success economic indicators, successful economic indicators like me, which are linked to either positive or negative outcome emotions. Thus, the link of entrepreneurial performance like passion and drive to economic gains is virtually unchallenged in literature. Hey. I like the way he's presenting the gap. Consequently, the emotional aspects of entrepreneurial process remain rooted in psychological perspective of economic behavior. Further, many of these studies do not distinguish by the type of entrepreneur or by their context, for example, gender and migrant status. What are you seeing here? Who can tell me what type of gap are we, are, we are adding to the issue gap we are found out there? What the last sentence of Feda, what type of gap is this one? The context. Context in, in, in use in terms of what? Gender. The demographic, the demographic. So you have got method and context joining together, but you place it in context because gender yeah. itself is a, a part of your data collection. So it's the, the demography, demography yeah. of your respondents. The migrant status too is a characterization of your respondents, but it's coming from a bond your context. Because you look at what he said, the type of entrepreneur, gender, or by their context, migrant status. So it's two gaps that I see. Type of entrepreneur is the yeah. data collection point. So that's the method one. Then the context yeah. then becomes the migrant status. Do you see that? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, nomadic, now let's look at the gap, the, the theory part coming. Nomadic approaches to study entrepreneurship results in the reproduction of masculinistic, masculinist discourses. Feminist economic perspective argue this is about theoretical gap. Nomadic approaches about the, the way we discuss the discourse. You can have the different types of discourse in the literature. So he's looking at the literature in terms of his theoretical discussions. Normative approaches to studying entrepreneurship results in the reproduction, reproduction of ma masculinist, masculinist discourses. Feminist economic perspectives argue normative approaches miss, miss diversity of entrepreneurial perspective. 
Similarly, similarly, recent calls by Shepherd and Pazet advocate for a broader exploration of, of the range and impact of emotion in entrepreneurship practices and experiences. Using the concept of emotional citizenry, a framework for exploring the role and experience of emotions in everyday shared uh, spaces, is one way to, mind, to examine the migrant encounter with policies. So it then goes on to say that Piquet and their Valentine emphasize key institutional spaces as uh, arenas where encounters are made for enacting enabling impacts with such a support program. Conversely, okay, so he talks about certain things, studying the peace spaces. The, but one thing I wanted to point to here, yeah, I was pointing out, out to the kind of theoretical discourses that you have. You have the normative approaches talking about the fact that entrepreneurship results in the production of reproduction of masculinist discourses. Then the feminist dimension to come out with feminist economic perspective argue that the material approaches miss certain things out. So there's a there's a there's a need to look at other things. So sometimes the gaps can come from a combination, but all leading to what you want, the person wants to fail to do. So by the time he reached and his his his, his point of make his argument of emotional citizenry is actually a good. It's actually a good one. Let's go to project management, which is part of HR, and, and, and look at that one too. I, I wanted to, after MIS, I've done this for several times today, so it's only to look at an example from there. But let's look at HR. Okay. HR, you are the ones who deal with a lot of stakeholders, stakeholders, stakeholder project management issues. So let's, I'm not looking, let's look at that one. Project stakeholder, this paper is called Managing Project Stakeholder Communication, just Kill Stock Festival case. So you can go and study. Um, Damba Festival and then what's the name? The one in the Akan environment. Odra. Mm. HR, if it's somebody says you are doing Odra, so you say that it's not it's not relevant for HR. But it's relevant, it's project management. People don't know. Managing <laughs> uh, 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 a festival is a project. That is where the guys are coming from. The argument is coming from. So let's look at the paper here. Okay. So project stakeholder management is one of the focal parts of project management. You see, aligning different objectives, interests, and expectations of projects directly contributes to the success of the project. Previous, project. previous research on project stakeholder management has mainly focused on conceptual development of, of stakeholder management tools and frameworks to improve the management of stakeholders. So in that, it means that previous studies on the project stakeholder management is just about the tools on how to manage stakeholders. The majority of the research on the stakeholder management has built to the framework consistent with the static perspective of projects, yet have pays less attention on how the relationship between the focal project organization and its stakeholders changes over the project life cycle. So they means that the current studies, the current tools have developed. You see, this is interesting because the tools are also frameworks and theories. The current tools that have been developed to explain stakeholder management are always looking at projects as a static perspective, you start and just end. They don't look at the fact that projects have go, go through cycles and they can be dynamic. A project, however, moves to different phases over its life cycle, thereby creating a dynamic context for management of project stakeholders. This gap in literature calls for research on stakeholder management that takes into account the project's life cycle. Very, very interesting. Very, very interesting. So the idea, the argument here is that Let's do stakeholder management research, but let's look at managing stakeholders, managing stakeholders through the life cycle of the project, not as a static event. Go and do a workshop for them and just forget about them. No. In this research, we address the stakeholder management. We address project stakeholder management by studying the most of communication with project stakeholders. Now look at something. Else. Please look at something. It's not going to communication. That's how he's going to address it. Now they have to find the gaps in communication too. Stakeholder communication ensures effective management of different stakeholders. First, he found the, the gap in the area called project management. And he chose an area called project management and chose to study project stakeholder management. Then he looked at the gaps in the project stakeholder management research and chose an area that they don't look at dynamism in the stakeholder management process. Then he then looked at communication. Then he has to now look at the, the gaps in communication. So the gaps are being tiered, leading to a point. Stakeholder communication com ensures the effective management, effective engagement of different stakeholders and hence plays a fundamental role in project stakeholder management. Because the, the role of communication in projects is crucial, 
the various communication needs in different phases of the project should be acknowledged and planned. That means that because projects are dynamic too, and they've got different phases, communication needs for different stakeholders at the different phases may, may, may differ. Furthermore, even though stakeholder communication is integral part of stakeholder management process, little empirical research, the word has come again, little, little, so a gap. Little empirical research exists on project, project stakeholder communication practices and their relationship with the attributes of these stakeholders. Therefore, the research question of the study can be formulated as how and why is stakeholder communication managed oh, interesting, over a project life cycle. So the gentleman who asked, can I combine gaps? This is how you combine gaps and lead to a research question or a research purpose for your study. Do you understand it? Then he's now coming to the theoretical gap. In order to address the research question, we built on the information process model, processing model, which is the most established model that addresses communication within and across organizations. Now listen to very carefully. Whenever you choose an area of research, every person you present your work to will ask you that, why didn't you choose the most established model to do the work again? If you look at my PhD, I said that I was doing PhD on resources. It said that the prevailing understanding or paradigm for looking at how firms combine resources to gain competitive advantage is the resource-based view of the firm and this later extension, the dynamic capability approach. I can't go and talk about resources and not use the resource-based theory. My PhD will fail. I have to justify why I'm not using it. So you can't, you need to, when you say, you're asking why, do, how do you get a theoretical gap? As you are forcing your area, if your, your, your study didn't come from, sometimes a person's gap, a person's thesis starts from the theory. But if your study, your thesis started from the issue, know the most important theory in the issue. What is the dominant theory in the issue? And in my view, as where I sit today, if you want a PhD and pass and pass comfortably, make sure that you choose the domain, use mature or emerging mature theories. Now, what do I mean by that? If you choose, there are some theories that I have exhausted. Don't want, don't use that one. There are some theories which are mature and are still relevant for the area. So he said that we built upon information processing model, which is the most established model that addresses communication within and across organization. We developed a generic framework for of stakeholder communication in the project context. We draw on the theoretical argument about how context shapes the, the use of the modes of communication. So he brought a different angle. In order to illustrate and elaborate on this framework, we use observations. Okay, he's talking about the how he did the theory and everything and stuff. Okay, so the, the focal theory and the, and, the, and, the, and the gaps here. So uh, the focal concept and the theoretical background. So he's going to explain that one. But I think he also explained, let me see if I have it here. Okay, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Okay, the conceptual framework is here. There's a part that he also talks about the gap in the theory when he's doing the discussion. Okay. So what, what am I trying to say in effect? What am I trying to say? Any questions before we go ahead? What am I trying to say? I'm trying to emphasize that the gaps matter, but the gaps tend to matter in different perspectives. The gaps tend to matter in different perspectives. And then you should know what theory. Let me show you. This guy is doing a paper on triggers of entrepreneurship among creative consumers. Creative consumers are consumers, or are also called end user consumers. Those who, um, by developing a product or a service for themselves, like for example, you do something to solve a problem for yourself and use for yourself personally. When your friends get to know about it, you tell them to do something for them. We call that one an end user consumer. One of them is one of the popular end user consumers is um, the mountain bike. The one who made the mountain bike. He made it, he, he likes biking on mountains and he just did some gears on his bike to be able to make him bike better. Then he realized that his friends needed it. So he did it for his friend. By the time he realized, it became a corporation. People were asking for it and started creating it and turning it to uh, into an uh, entrepreneurial venture. But he didn't go inside for profit. He went inside with the objective of solving a problem for himself. Those are what we call creative consumers, which has received less attention. But let me point out something here. This is um, a gap, a theoretical gap they point out here. In the field of consumer sporting goods, Shah and Tripper developed a theoretical model to explain when creative consumers decide to found or not found a firm to commercialize their own innovation. So when, at what point does an end user 
entrepreneur and start a firm or not start a firm. They identify three, three main factors which that assimilate a user's innovative entrepreneurship process. When they have access to complementary asset, assets, when they possess information advantages, enabling them to uniquely identify opportunities that establish firms will underestimate. And when the rents for the entrepreneurial activity exceed the opportunities of their cost of their opportunity cost of their time. So when they do it and they'll gain value out of it in terms of rents, when they realize that what they, are, they need, they are trying to solve, established firms will never do that or will not even look into that area. And when they have got the access to be able to do that, so that's when they do that. But this initial work opens a research avenue for investigation, for investigation. Since the factors, the authors focus on organizational time factors rather than private factors in terms of the life stages. So this guy is arguing that he's saying that these are organizational variables about why a person will start a company. But he said that there are private issues. Sometimes maybe somebody, it happens with women a lot, in between childbirths, they may stop, go back, and then stay on their own while they're raising the child, they start a business. So those ones are not being captured. Those private factors that let people start their own business or become innovators, they don't, people are not looking into that. So to extend Shah's and Tripper's first assumption, these say to rubbish it, to extend. So most of you, your work will be extending somebody's work or testing it. You have to be very careful trying to rubbish somebody's work. To extend Shah's and Tripper's first assumption and explore why creative consumers decide to become entrepreneurs, we aim to answer the following three questions. What mechanisms, especially the private ones, trigger creative consumers to become entrepreneurs? What are the pathways of an end user entrepreneurship? Are there more favorable times or periods of their life where an end user will take on entrepreneurial venture? Like I just mentioned with the woman. So here, the reason why the study is important is that the gap, the, the area has not been researched. That's end user entrepreneurship. That is important. But number two, the gap he's trying to address with the model is that the current understanding there, which is Charles and Trippers model, looks at organizational factors, why people start a company. But they don't look at private factors, individual private factors, why a person may start a company. His study wants to look at those individual parts. So the gentleman that asked a question concerning the, how can I contribute to your theory? This is how it is. Sometimes the existing theories are looking at only one dimension of the issue. You can extend that theory by looking at other dimensions, which matter. Other dimensions matter. Now look at what they said in the, the, at the end. I said you can find gaps too at the end of the paper. Our research also has limitations that offer clear opportunities for future research. First, the central limitation of, the, is the, of this survey is that it's focused on only one end user, and only on the end user and not professional entrepreneurs. Our interviews were conducted at tw with 20 end, user, end users who became entrepreneurs. A strong complementary study. He said, do a complementary to replicate the same qualitative survey. Don't change my survey, but do the, use my same questionnaire, but replicate it with two samples. Look at those who are end user entrepreneurs and look at those who are professional entrepreneurs and look at compare their entrepreneurship processes, how they began. Number two, many people who do end user entrepreneurship studies or entrepreneurship studies look at the expert after the person has achieved. Look at, look at despite people study him after he has achieved. A deeper understanding and report using can be made using ethnography and then what longitudinal methodology. So you see that this is a method gap which are more appropriate for exploring the ongoing process. So we don't need to wait for the person to become an entrepreneur. Let's study him as he's going to become an entrepreneur. Let's study him now. The ongoing process, so use a longitudinal and ethnographic process where you stay with the person, you look at his culture, you look at everything, how he's going. So that is one, as well as quantitative methods. So that, that is the quantitative, qualitative people can do that, but the quantitative people should also look at interesting, Identify the interesting entrepreneurship patterns and determiners, such as age, gender, education, and work trajectory, and how that one affects a person in becoming an entrepreneur. So there are other ones there. I'm just trying to show you that at the end of the person's study, you can also leave gaps for you. At the end of the person's study. For example, this SME, SME study that we're looking at in terms of um, the small businesses, accounting. If you go to the end of their work, they also have certain future research directions. Sometimes some people don't have it. But look at this. Okay, so our findings should be interpreted within the context of the limitations. So he talks about the limitations, but then he talks about the fact that despite the limitations, this study contributes to theory and practice as it opens areas for future research. First, the owner's perceptions of competence of their family employees should be could be operationalized 
to test the moderation effect. Method gap again, method gap, method gap. To test this moderation effect on decision making process in small family business. Second, given that the closeness of a family relationship does not determine the influence family employees exert on the business practices, antecedents of perceived competence could be explored. This is an issue. You should study antecedents of perceived competence. It's also an issue and method again. Third, given that some owners accept suggestions from external experts, future research could explore factors influencing owners' openness to accept proposals for accounting practices. Where are the, where is the motivation to do sound accounting practice coming from? Is it coming from external factors? Let's study that one. That's what he's telling you. So you can do your study from either get your graphs from either the ones which are sorry, the ones, the graphs which are at the beginning of the work or the end of the work. Both of them are necessary. Both of them are necessary. So how do you, how do you see gas being communicated? Gas are communicated as missing issues in the literature. That is one. A limited discussion in literature, conflicts in literature, and the theoretical approach, like I mentioned right now, missing theoretical model. Look at what you said. The organizational factors are being described, but the private factors are not being looked into. Conflicts in the empirical methods. He was telling you that his data was with only only twenty people looking at a specified type of people. Those who were um, end user entrepreneurs. So, future studies should do a comparison between professional entrepreneurs and end user entrepreneurs. Mixed previous empirical results. Professor Abbott said that in the developed countries, corporate governance and finance financing decisions are inconclusive. Inconclusive. So, mixed, mixed uh, empirical results. Less contextual evaluation of geographic representation. Professor Abbott also said that very little has been done in Sub Saharan Africa and very little has been done in Ghana. In South Africa okay, and development account, then complex combining them. See how we combine some of them to generate your PhD. So the research topic leading to a title should be original, should be of interest to both the researcher and the supervisor, should be timely and relevant, must be, must make contribution to existing knowledge or respond to a gap. Um, it should be specific and distinct and not too broad. Usually you start from the topic, then the research gap will come inside and help you to generate the title. Mavis is clever and captivating and not forgettable. The research question I feel from it might be possible to address through a research design. Some things are not researchable, so very careful. So what do you do? You identify a broad topic, you determine the scope you are going to use the study in. Then you determine, you do a preliminary literature review to gain what knowledge about the gaps so that I can write the research problem. Now, as I mentioned, the business problem differs from the research problem. For every business problem, you can have a thousand and one research gaps that may respond to the problem. So they have a business problem, it's not bad. Having it, it's not bad. But you have to now go into the research to understand what is happening in research. What kind of gap exists concerning the same business issue you are thinking of? Then when you make a choice, you can either choose to study one organization, different parts of an organization, study two or more organizations, or study a sector. It depends on you, depends on the resources you have, and depends on the nature of the gap. And the methodology are also using. So what, how then is my type thesis title going to be formulated? The topic like corporate um, governance is there. Then the contribution, where is the gap? Firms financing decisions of listed firms in developing countries. So the contest for a PhD in UG, sometimes I want to know where the, the study is taking place and the scope, sometimes the industry that we are looking into. Then the contribution, what will be the variables you are looking into, the nature of the study, the complexity of the analytical technique that like you mentioned to do, like maybe a structure equation modeling approach, a methodology being used, novel, the novelty of the context. Sometimes the, the, the contribution is really in the context. Sometimes it happens that way. Those who are doing the social sciences that the work is more up to um, about Ghana, 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 uh, and uh, history. The work will end up being more about, the, about Ghana, so you can't do much about that or an issue in the country. Now let's look at examples here. I think you have about five minutes more. Please, you have another class after this. Is it finance? Or oh, is not coming on today? Yeah, yeah, yes, bro. Yes, bro. Also, I have raised my hand. Okay. Um, is, you, you may go. As for, we'll continue teaching. And then when you come later, you can get a video and we'll recap with you. Because I think some of them have got questions. But last, last week, we, we lost out to. <laughs> is the, the, the video is there, the full video is there for you to watch. So oh, prof. I can't stop, I can't stop oh, and hang prof. it. Oh,
bro, that's not <laughs> bro. That feeling is not the same. Sometimes too, yeah, be less interactive. I can't, I can't stop here. Yeah, yeah we might be able to Most important but... because we we love your voice, so we want to hear, bro. But if yes. I listen to your video, can hear my voice? Please let me continue. Those of you have to go. We 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 we, we party. Well, you we... can go. Let me continue with those who are here so that they, you can get a video and watch. And the next time if you meet, we can then do the gap analysis. Tell me your questions you have. Okay. Already I've told you both to sit down and choose a day that I can do another session with you because the time is too short for us to be having a session that this session. And if you want to finish on time, you have to do much more. Okay, so determine the score. I mean, I've got more to teach. So you have to make more time for me to learn from me. If you give me more time, I will give you more. If you give me less time, I'll give what I can give. So look at this one. More, women entrepreneurship in Asian developing countries, their development and main constraints. So you look at how they develop at their main constraints. The next one is the entrepreneurship and SMEs in Ethiopia, evaluating the role, uh, prospect, and problems faced by women in the emerging sector. The two studies, first two studies are the same. One is in Ethiopia, one is in Asia. And this other one that is in Ethiopia, they have just told you that they're looking at a sub team being the SMEs, but the issues they're looking at are the same. Women entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship in Middle East, understanding the barriers, the same thing as the first two. They are doing also doing barriers, the problems. But then they add that they want to see how technology supports or helps to address those barriers. So that's the only difference I've added. Women entrepreneurship in small service firms. Now look at the first number two and number four. Number two was SMEs. Number, number four is SMEs, all right, but the SMEs in the service sector. So please, your, your study can look at different perspectives and then just add another variable demographic and you have changed the, the work from somebody's work. Motivation, barriers, and performance, similar as the number two. Critical factors of women entrepreneurship in rural Bangladesh. The difference here is the rural, the rural. Almost everything is the same, but it's the rural that makes a difference. Entrepreneurship motivation are determinants of women entrepreneurship challenges. Almost the same as the other, but this one, the country is not mentioned. So you may see different forms of studies and how they contribute, they echo their contribution. The background is different from the problem. The background introduces the, the recent issue and helps you examine the current discourse or trends or views concerning the social phenomena like we saw. The research question will not be explicitly stated in the background but implied in an argument. Most of the background are going to have industry statistics, real world perspective, examples from industry. Of Abba said in Ghana, for instance, and in sometimes policy makers and pressing concerns in the world, industry or citizen or trends worth looking into. However, the research problem is should be strictly focused on the research for, for a good PhD, should try and focus more on the research issue and draw from the previous studies that have been done. What has been done and why, what has not been done? And why is it important to address those gaps? You saw what happened in the small business paper, small family business paper for accounting. They were justifying why it is important to address the gap why it is important to address the gap. So let's look at an, an example. I think we have done quite a number of examples. So right now, what I'll do is that I'll, there's another example I wanted to show you, but um, I've done quite a, I want to, let me just show you one more example coming from um, the recent thesis by Joseph Budu. So as I mentioned last week, if I did, Joseph Budu won the, for the first time in the humanities, won the, Vice Chancellor's Award for Best Thesis, and I supervised him. So you can actually see the chapter one. He has gracefully shared his chapter one with us so that we can have it for our, our, our tutelage, for our present sharing to you. So let's look at it. I just want to go, this is abstract. I want to go to the chapter one, what the chapter one is. Okay, so look at it. The chapter one, the background, the background of all the country industry. He is doing something on digital music platform. So, of, of course, it means that he has to start from that discussion. Revenue from digital music platform is now 63% of our music industry revenue and has over 50 million customers. Generally, a digital platform is a two-sided market or market or two distinct sides that benefit 
from network be facilitated through, inter through interaction and shared flows. In digital music platform, the two distinct sides are the musicians and the consumers. Therefore, on these are big news, for instance, musicians on the on the on, on one hand sell their music at dig as digital singles, full albums, or streaming content to paying consumers on the other customers on the other hand. Despite such whooping sound generated in the industry, musicians remain an, an underpaid. Hey, remain an underpaid group. Okay. The majority of them cannot create sustainable revenue from their creative works. Further, while pirates deplete their, their media revenues, music consumers barely purchase music and royalty uh, incomes are faced decline. So all these are coming from industry perspective. Consequently, musicians can, can neither continue promoting their song to become hits, nor recoup their investments in the industry. Okay. The unfulfilled, so those ones are coming from Ghana. Those, those references here come from Ghana. The unfulfilled need of, of, for popularity forces them to upload their course written music to free on free download website, hoping to secure erratic public performances invitation, performance invitations. The result is a steady decline in the income, precarious economic conditions, and poverty. Some cannot afford accommodation or food, and sometimes beg for money to fend for themselves. The problem persists until retirement, during which some depend on rich politicians for stipends. The high possibility of artists dying means untold hardships for the family and dependents are left behind. So then it goes on to talk about encouragingly this kind of music platform. So just as far as that describe the business problem for you. This encouragingly this kind of, this digital music platform offer great potential to provide musicians with a steady income source and personal development opportunities and spin over effect over for other industry stakeholders. Moreover, the, the user adoption rate for digital music platform is, right, is steadily rising or is rising steadily and is currently around 1 million new subscribers per month. A growth rate more significant than even other, even every other category of recorded music business. Thus, me, digital music platforms can connect musicians to their listeners at a fee and generate revenue for them. This potential is right for, is a ripe area for future IS research. Already, it has attracted, so it's gradually introducing the research part. It has attracted researchers' attention to focusing primarily on consumer intention, adoption, use, and reuse of digital platforms. Okay. Other, others also focus on design and development of digital platforms and, you, and issues about competition. Despite the value, valuable insights from these studies, how digital platforms afford value to industries, industry stakeholders remain an unexplained research issue. Further, furthermore, how technology contributes to IS value creation beyond firm level has not been explained theoretically. Successive studies have attended to explain aspects of value, but so far short of the explain, explaining the contributing mechanism. Third attempts focus on the theoretical contributions foundations of value creation in e-business, the value network concept, and then the value creating logic. How, how mobile ticketing technologies successfully enable revenue management. Others focus on dynamic cycle of control po points in creating value in data business strategy and creating and capturing value under moral hazard. hazard. So there's so much here. We find these studies valuable and that the business new the the e hey, why let me see something I just want to check something okay wow that's very long anyway so by the time he finished he pointed out that first for the foregoing studies first the foregoing studies have have silent assumption that organizations actions and strategic activities create value consequently they give little attention to no or no premium to material properties or technologies are mentioned in the studies. So he continued to mention certain gaps that exist concerning the area of data music. Then after doing one or two, what I like about it is that it, it numbers them. Number one, number two, that's value creation, number three. Then he finishes the foregoing questions. So just that we need knowledge on digital platforms or how digital platforms afford or constrain value hence this thing. Then go to research problem. Then I think he spends more time on the research problem looking at the theory part. 
So he established the issue at the end of the the research background, which is not bad. So people can present the whole issue again at the research program. This study identifies and aims at resolving three a three point research problem. First, existing reviews of digital platform research point to a lack of theorization. I mentioned it in the digital platform research. They suggest that any effort to address this lack needs to take into account the platform's interactions mode. Further, there is a broader research a broader there is a broader research need to theorize societal and business changes business changes that digital platform generates. Such with theorization, which transition must include affordances and constraints provided by the ICT artifact and, and, and explicitly examine the unintended consequences of the ICT artifact. Unfortunately to date, research continues to theorize digital platform using deterministic approaches. So it talks about the, the same thing that you saw the guy did, doing about the feminist approach and the masculine approach. He's also doing deterministic approach and non-deterministic approaches. So that's what he does here. Then go to second. The, we need research that, um, that overcomes the fixation on cross-functional communication and information networks and efficient control of operations after IT implementation. Okay, so then he talks about other types of gaps here. Now, what am I trying to emphasize here? He identified his gaps and goes straight to the point that there's a first gap, there's a second gap, then the third gap here too. And the, after doing the third gap, I think this is there a fourth one. There's a fourth one. Then he brings the Ghana part. Bring the Ghana part to the fourth one. Then after the fourth one, he has finished presenting the gaps. In summary, the study identifies three knowledge gaps. The first, the lack of theorization and the need to theorize data platform affordances and constraints and unintended consequences. The second gap is the lack of explanation of outcomes and goals achieved in actualizing technology affordances beyond the foreign level. The third one is the lack of explanations and affordances of specific technologies in specific industries. So this, these gaps inform the study's purpose to formulate a framework that explains how digital platforms in the music industry afford a constraint value. Okay. So he goes on to talk about a research purpose and then and raise that this study draws on the chair of performance to explain the contextual conditions and concrete outcomes of digital platforms and data finances and constraints. Then he talks about the little bit about the theory he wants to use, and then he, he points out the research gap, the research purpose. Then he goes to the research objective. The research objective, after each objective, he tells you how to relate to the gap. This section I, uh, reiterates the research gaps in the research problem to connect each gap to the respective research objective. Sometimes arguments have come from some uh, quarters that when sometimes they read people's research objective, they don't see how it connects to the research gap. So he wanted to do that here. So he stated the objective and said this to, to achieve this research objective, this study goes from the chair of for for that. This is the how to achieve it. But the first research objective concerns the need for transition. So the first research of God, uh, objective focuses focuses on the transition, how to address the transition. Then the second focuses on something, the third focuses on something. So you have to try and look at it in that perspective that when you are presenting research gaps, you have to make sure that you tie to later on they can tie to your objective. And the objectives can then tell us what you are doing in the research. Now, a lot has been said today. One of the things that I just want to emphasize here is the fact that you need to be able to know where you are going with your research work. And by to be able to know where you are going in your research, research work, you need to be able to choose a topic and academic discipline, determine your scope, and then conduct in, uh, some preliminary literature review so that you can be able to know what literature you have and then how to bring the literature together and use it to be able to write out a research gap and meet a research problem. It is not going to be easy, but I know you can do it. We'll continue next week, delving into the same matter again, looking at how to be able to look at the literature review and going back to the research gaps to be able to know how to formulate them. It's been great teaching you, but there's something that you may be doing at the end, and I want you to keep it in mind. By, by the time we finish this one, you know. This is going to go towards your research, your research uh, proposal that you have to produce at the end. Select an area of research, conduct a review to find a minimum of three literature. Identify at least three research gaps from the related literature. Write a research background of 500 or 300 words. Write a research background of no less than 600 words. 
I turn the research purpose of the question and then develop a title based on what you have done. Develop a title on what you have done. Okay. So I think I saw a little girl. Yeah, you should get your hand. I saw that your hand up. Yes, Prof. Um, Prof, so per our timetable, we're supposed to have met you in person next week. But I'm wondering if that would be a preferred option, especially looking at uh, the new COVID cases that are being recorded. Oh, I don't know what would be your preference. On the first day, I told you I'm doing everything online because the way we teach and we use different materials going up and down, I can't do it in the classroom. Okay, great. Yeah, hello, Prof. Yeah, please. Thank you very much. Yeah, Prof, please. I have a question. Um, I have a, a, a paper that a friend submitted to a journal. And in the paper, my friend made a contribution by stating that there, there has been a lot of um, um, write up on a particular topic. Like she was writing on stress and she was saying that there have been a lot of papers on stress that was focusing on using the structural equation modeling, but she wants to use a qualitative style of writing the paper. So she submitted the paper to a journal and then the paper came back with the editor saying that she needs to use the same uh, quantitative method whereby she has to use the structural equation modeling. So I want to find out since we are talking about gaps and then here's the case that particular topic on stress is being treated or is being they always use uh, the quantitative uh, approach of analyzing the data, but she wants to go the quant qualitative. But yes, so the reviewers are of the view that she has to still go back and then use the same in analyzing her work. So I don't know whether that's, we can still say that a gap is something that is less discussed in literature, because here is the case, it's less discussed in literature. Yes, so the reviewers are saying that go back, don't use the qualitative stuff, but still use the quantitative. Okay, so the problem you have is that you are dealing with um, um, uh, academic politics. They are method, method gap, yeah. You are dealing with academic politics. Okay. The, that, that, first of all, in terms of actual research, sometimes it's not every research topic and the way you frame your questions that you can study quanti qualitatively. So it has to be quantitative, that is one. I've not seen the paper, so that's one thing I'll tell you. Two. Okay. Okay. There are certain term, thing, things that if you stay in, in studying them, they want more generalizability on the issue. And that is what you see with a lot of medical research. So quantity is more important. So they can generalize and see that stress in this situation should be addressed like this. If you do qualitative, you cannot get the numbers to be able to generalize. So they will not want that one. Okay, all right. Now my, okay. my three, it could also be the style of the journal. The journal is into more quantity. So whenever you are submitting a paper to a journal, you have to look at the, the pattern. Have you ever seen a qualitative paper in that journal before? Have you seen a quantitative mm -hmm. paper in that journal before? Download them. What if a paper has been accepted? What was the style of approach? Mimic the same thing. Make the structure, uh, the, 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 way the, the way the person frame is thinking. So that I'm not saying the content. It's about the structure and how the yeah. person makes arguments. If you want yeah. to get it. Because journals are ruled by editors and they think in a particular way. So to come into that community, community, you should think in that particular way like them. Okay. Okay, Prof. You understand what I'm trying to say? Yes, please. Then yes, your person too doesn't have gravitas. Who are you to come in the industry and come and tell us that yeah, they, we have done quantity and you are coming to do quality? Who are you? Even if you want to be <laughs> do a quality ourselves, you are not getting any name yet. You are just coming up. So okay. sometimes they may kill it because they want to do it themselves and maybe the first to say it. That's why I'm saying you're dealing with politics. Mm -hmm. So you have to understand the journal, the style of the journal, the preference of the editor. What the, okay. Go look at the editor of, of the journal, the past five issues that have come, what kind of papers have been published there? It's all quantity. So you have to choose about it. So they, that, if that journal focuses on rigor from quantity perspective, then that's what they want. Okay, all right. Thank you Lastly, very much. Bro. you don't know anybody. Sometimes you, yeah. I, I know students who get their papers accepted because a, 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 in a, a few a, two years ago, our department we hosted a, an international conference here, and most of the big guys in our area came down. They came to know them. Now they send the people, the people tell them that we want it, but do they do this? They even mentor you for one year. 
until the paper is getting accepted, it gets accepted. Because they know you. Now you're part of the family. They don't know you. You have written something. And you didn't have, sometimes, some people say that, oh, when you're doing a PhD, you're publishing a lot. But when you finish his PhD, you cannot publish anymore. The time you're doing his PhD, look at the person who's name was attached, his supervisor. When the paper goes, they see the supervisor say, oh, the paper is good, and they accept the paper. Now he's on his own. He says that they, they, they treat him on his own. So he has to build his own cloud and takes time. Okay. Okay. Thank you both. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. Any other question? So it means that as a more bad judge, Charles of Corey, all of you understand everything so well. Francis, Edmond, Paul, Prince. Hello, uh, hello, Prof. We yeah, are, Prof. Okay. For me, I'm digesting it. Okay. Yeah, okay, Prof. Thank you very much. We are grateful for the pointers. So I think you should go back and download a, a couple of papers and start looking into the papers very well. So I can identify some gaps and use it to write your research problem. Okay then. Grace, please, you can go ahead. No, please. Um, sorry, Prof. Since um, this is qualitative, and then we are going to develop a research proposal. I know there will be a methodology. Is it strictly that um, it should be qualitative method or someone can do quantity? You can do quantity. You can do quantity. Sorry, I was drinking water. Thank you. you okay, do- thank you. So there's no other question. Okay. Yeah, Prof. Uh, hello, Prof. Yes. Uh, okay, 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 okay. It, it, it's okay. It's okay. I've seen it. It's okay. Prof. Thank you. Prof. Please go ahead. Okay. Uh, Prof, um, thank you very much. Um, I just want to, um, you've cited a lot of examples and most of the scenarios and examples you are giving are from the other disciplines like marketing um finance and all that so, so those of us from head um head policy and management i just want to plead that maybe going forward you could be giving some examples from our discipline so that we can also relate very well to you thank you forgive me you're welcome. Hi, Prof. Cynthia, you can go ahead. Please, I think we don't have many yes, people. Have a you can just go ahead so that we can answer. Thank you, Prof. Um, please, I wanted to find out what is the maximum number of gaps that you can identify in a research work? Is there any maximum number or minimum number? Thank you. I will not say there's a maximum, there's a minimum. You need enough to be able to do your PhD. Okay. Sometimes mm. people can identify five gaps and they may only respond to three. Okay. Mm. And remember, you're also writing a number of words. Sometimes the gaps are related to each other. So ask mm. yourself, what point am I trying to make? What, what am I arriving at? So I want to. You see, you need a gap to establish the issue. Listen carefully. You need a gap to establish the issue. That can be two or three ga- gaps. That, uh, you need to establish the issue. Mm-hmm. Why you are studying that particular issue or the sub-issue. You need to establish the, um, the relevance of that issue within the discipline. That could be also be done. You need to establish the just, justify or establish the reason or, or for choosing a particular theory. So that will come to there. Then you need to also establish 
the context why you are going to do it in this particular area or look at this particular set of variables or this demographic. So if you look at it very carefully, you need the issue being established, the theory being established, and the context, and sometimes the method being established, depending on what matters to you. So it can complete it, and that's what makes the thing quite long. Thank you, sir. Yeah. As I want, you can go ahead. Okay, Prof, thank you. Um, if you identify an issue at your workplace and you want to research into that, um, how do you scale up from the issue level to the discipline and all that you talk about? Maybe the motivation for going to that research is the fact that you identify an issue at the workplace. So now you want to go into that and then see how it can be fixed. So how do you make it more a bit more academic? You don't make it a major. The issue that I have found has a has has a phenomenon in it. If this is the issue, declining employee productivity, you have got a phenomenon in it. A phenomenon may be employee productivity. So you go and read on employee productivity in the organizations and find out the gaps related to that area. Do you understand me? Everything that you identify should have should be related to a phenomenon. You can't just identify something. Okay. If you identify a fraud, it's a phenomenon. If you identify employee um, um, employee relationship or employee behavior, it's a phenomenon. So you have to know what you want to have seen. And what you have seen is what you go and research on. If it's about policy okay. implementation, go and read on that. So you find out what have you identified on your interest area, then go and read about it. All right, thank you very much. That is why I said that identify the broad topic or phenomenon and your academic discipline. Determine the scope you want to look into, then conduct the review before you come for the gaps. See, this is the how it should go. Okay. Hello, Prof. Thank you once again. Uh, you've explained sufficiently about the need for us to align with uh, your supervisor or your lead supervisor in particular, so that the, the work can be more smooth. Uh, but I heard in some quarters that as a student, the PhD is your work, and therefore it's like you have to own it. And uh, that's where I, I need a bit of clarity. Do you follow your passion, your drive? Or as you have explained, you need to align at all costs with that of your lead supervisor. But if the PhD is your work, why, do, why are you coming to the university to come to do the PhD? Why don't you do it yourself? Is the PhD is your work? What it means in my PhD is your work is that as you be choose the area, you are the one doing the reading and you are going to defend it as you go on. Your supervisor is not going to do it for you. So you should know what you are doing and what you have done in there, the choices you have made. Okay. So uh, because supervisor is not going to write for you, you are going to write yourself. Or even if it helps you even writing, you are the one going to stand there and defend it. So you have to own the work. Okay, sir. That's what it means. Now, the question is that it's not about the fact that you should align your team to your supervisor. What you are trying to say that whatever you are going to do, make sure your supervisor has interest. That's what, and interest is built developed in so many different perspectives. To tell you the truth, I am not a quantity researcher, but I guess students who are doing quantity, I'll bring somebody on the team who is a quantity researcher who will make sure that the quantity that you are doing, the person can make sure, uh, make sure that I've done the right thing. But I'll also look at the essence of the PhD about what you are doing. Is there a PhD in it? But there are certain areas in the discipline that is not my research strength. I'm not a data scientist. I understand uh, big data analysis. I've, I've supervised people with big data analysis before. But I'm not a data scientist. Somebody wants to do AI and data science and uh, looking at certain algorithms and stuff. I'll really be not the best person for the person. And that supervisor will be the best person. But the question is that even that thing is wants to do, does it even fit the discipline, information system, or if it's computer science? That's the question we have to ask ourselves. 
So some things are very interesting, but you have to know what are the relevant questions that are being asked from your discipline perspective. Then are the supervisors in the department having the, the capacity to supervise that in that area? If they don't have it, then you need to get people to help you to go to do that. And that in that scenario, we have had situations where external people have been joined to the team, external to the department have been joined to the team, and the work doesn't go well because they don't look at it at the PhD level, look at it as just a normal work you are doing. Okay. Thank you, bro. So sometimes we tell students that as much as possible, go and download the PhD in the area of topic you are chosen so you can see a sample PhD. If nobody has done something in the area, you are doing something on blockchain, go and download the blockchain PhD from reputable universities. Supervise the reputable supervise and look at what the person did. Okay, sir. Okay, there are no more questions. Azu, I thought you were going to ask a question. Mm, I'm okay, Prof. You tell me you're okay. When it comes to delivering something and I realize you're not okay, I also tell you that I'm not okay. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Uh, William, are you at work? Thank you, Prof. Thank you, Prof. Well, we'll see you next week. Okay, sir. Okay. Okay.